It's up, up and away for the mid-cap market, almost 2% up on that index, and stocks are flying across the board. The ticker is alerting you to what's going on, whether it's NBFCs, whether it's specialty chemicals, it's really an across-the-board move today in the market. Green is the color, so to speak. Now, Chalet Hotels is the next stock that is on our radar. This is a recent listing, stock listed on um, 7th of February, if my memory serves me right. 280 was the listing price, so it hasn't done too much. I mean, it's just been sort of dithering around that spot, but it's only one month uh, into the, uh, um, the listed space, so to speak. Ambit has a note, and they are very optimistic on Shally. Let's quickly get some of the details out. They have a buy with a uh, target price of 407. That's a good 40% upside on the stock. Now, why are they so optimistic? They say it's the preferred bet in the premium hotel space. Uh, there's a rare combination of moat as well as growth. Uh, the pricing and the start of commercial uh, and retail rentals uh, is going to drive uh, ROS improvement. And they're expecting deleveraging to take place as well from five times to under half. Uh, that's what their expectation is. And, and EPS growth, uh, very sustained EPS growth, a five times increase actually in EPS all the way up till 2023. Now, those are some of the expectations. Let's find out from the management if the company is indeed going to deliver on some of these hopes on the street. We have with us now Mr. Sanjay Sethi, MD and CEO of Chalet Hotels joining in. Uh, Mr. Sethi, good morning. Actually, good afternoon. Thank you so much for taking this quick call. So I don't know if you could hear some of the points that I was just uh, sort of detailing. That's one brokerage that's quite optimistic on your business. But first things first, uh, tell us what's happening with this deleveraging plan. Uh, what is your own target for FY20? How much debt will you reduce? So thank you so much for having me on the channel today uh, and good afternoon. Uh, you know, I'm afraid I haven't read the note, but I did hear some of the key highlights that you mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, I won't comment on the uh, note of Ambit. You know, we've at Chalet, uh, the management, the promoters, uh, have always been very confident of the business model uh, that we've operated in. Operated in. And, uh, you know, the response of the informed shareholder at the IPO sort of reconfirmed that. Um, so the, the asset-owning uh, model in hospitality uh, works. It has worked in the past and will continue to work in the future. Uh, having said that, um, on the deleveraging part, um, you know, we've already delevered. So we are down to 1,500 crores from uh, where we were. We were 2,600 crores pre-IPO. Uh, so we are at a comfortable situation as far as the, the debt is concerned. Uh, and now we're looking forward to the growth through uh, organic as well as inorganic needs. Okay, so no more debt reduction plans. You're comfortable with 1,500 crores uh, right now. Uh, there were some reports that you are actually looking at some distressed assets as well. So would that push your debt higher? So it's like this, you know, we've, uh, let me first talk about the pipeline that we have on board. Uh, we have uh, three hotels under development, with, uh, which will add about 580 odd rooms. And we have two office towers which will be under development. One is already under development, the other is going to uh, develop very soon. Uh, which will add 1.1 million square foot of office space more. Now, these are the deep markets of Mumbai, Bangalore, and Hyderabad, the, the three hotels and the office towers. Um, that, that part of the pipeline that we have, we are not likely to need any more debt. Okay. So we'll be able to develop this without any additional increase in debt at all. As and when we do get some uh, you know, acquisition opportunities, which are value creative in nature, we would uh, certainly... Um, uh, look at the, the means of funding it. And if at some point of time we need to interest the, increase the debt, we may need to do that, do that. But you must remember that whatever we acquire, we're talking about ready operating assets. They'll come with their own set of EBITDA numbers to, to help us sustain the debt levels. So they will be value created to that extent and will service the debt, the incremental debt on their own. I'm going to take a follow-up question on the debt issue, uh, Mr. Sethi. Again, you know, some of these estimates are very optimistic. They are talking about uh, a profit of over 200 crores in FY21 from a figure of about 23 crores in FY18. So that's a huge jump. I mean, that's why that figure, five times increase in EPS as we get into uh, FY23. Now, a lot of this is premised on the fact that your uh, finance costs keeps coming down as you delever, as you deleverage your balance sheet. So that's again, right. can you give us some more numbers that we can work with? Are these kind of profit numbers uh, actually... Uh, fair? Can can one work with them? These estimates, uh, that is? Any, yeah, I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to discuss forward-looking numbers, and uh, since I haven't seen the report in detail, I'm not in a position to comment on that either. Uh, but look, but deleveraging. Said, we're extremely confident. We but, are, so on deleveraging, mm -hmm. as I said, we are down to a very comfortable uh, 1,500 mm -hmm. crores uh, with EBITDAs 
uh, of last year. We're able to service this very comfortably. As we grow, we're growing in double digits in the H1. Uh, we will continue to get more ability to, uh, to uh, service even more efficiently. So we're very confident that we won't have a challenge on the debt part. Right now, I don't want to comment on any further reduction on the debt side. Fair enough, Sanjay. How is demand shaping up? Because you are looking to, you know, increase your room count by 580 mm -hmm. uh, rooms. What is, say, currently the average occupancy at your hotels, uh, the average room rent, and has it gone up? Is the demand better today than it was, say, a year ago? Yeah. So I can report the H1 numbers of this year because that's what we reported to the public. And we've seen uh, roughly around uh, 10 odd percent growth in rev per revenue per available room, which is rev par. Our ADR or ARR has gone up from 7,481 to 7,756. And the occupancy has gone up from 70% to 75%. This is portfolio wide. Uh, we've seen uh, a little more incremental growth in some of the hotels where the occupancies are higher. And so it's a blend of uh, some hotels looking at uh, protecting or growing their market share. And some hotels, which have already reached a certain amount of uh, stable occupancies, look at an aggressive uh, rate growth chart. And that's resulted in healthy rep bar numbers uh, for H1. Um, um, and uh, I believe H so typically H2 is stronger than H1 in our business. So we expect H2 to be strong too. We've seen some extreme, the country's seen some extremely positive uh, business results uh, in the first two months of, of this calendar year, which is January and February. Uh, both domestic uh, as well as international tourists have done extremely well. And uh, to that extent, we believe that uh, H2 will be supported uh, uh, for growth. All right, uh, Mr. Sethi, we leave it on that note. Good luck with those plans. That's Chalet Hotels talking about business prospects going forward. We need to take a very quick break. We will come back on the other side and get you more on the markets and more stock-specific action also coming up.